How's it going everyone? In the previous video, we talked about integers. So in this video, we're going to be covering floats. And Rust has two primitive types for floating point numbers, which are F32 and F64. And those just stand for 32-bit floats and 64-bit floats. If you were to create a decimal in Rust, for example, if you were to create pi, and you were to say that that was equal to 3.1415, this would by default become a float of 64 bits. And the reason it defaults to 64 bits instead of 32 is just because modern CPUs can handle it. It's roughly the same speed, but has much more precision. And just to demonstrate what they look like side by side, we're going to create pi, which will be of type F32, and we're going to use the seven digits of precision. So here we have 3.1415. So we've used four digits so far, and we can add nine, two, and seven. So here we have seven decimals, and that's all the 32-bit float can contain. If we were to create a 64-bit float, for example, we might have something called decimal because I'm out of creative names and we were to say that this was of 64 bits, then we can create something such as 2.7182 818-284-590-45. And maybe it wasn't so obvious here, but here we have 15 digits that come after the decimal. So the size of the float practically doubles. But next, let's try to print both of these to the console. So I will print pi and I will also print the decimal. And once we run this, what we're going to end up with are these two floating point numbers. Now, if we were to add some more values to the decimal part, such as four nines here and four nines here and rerun our program, you're going to notice that those parts are going to be truncated. Or maybe that's not entirely true because as you can see over here for the second one, the decimal was rounded up. Although for the 32-bit float, it remained the same. So just like with integers, you should respect the limit of the type that you've specified. But moving on, there's one last thing I want to show you regarding floats. And for this example, I'm going to create two variables, one called A, which will be of type float64, and that's going to equal 0.1. Then we're going to let B of type F64 equal 0.2. And then we also want to create a sum, which will end up being the sum of A and B, which will also be of 64 bits. So A plus B. And due to my habit of programming in Python, I haven't included a single semicolon. But finally, we're going to print that the sum is equal to the sum. And once we run this code, what you're going to notice is that we're going to get this crazy decimal number. And the reason this happens is because Decimal numbers are incredibly difficult to represent in binary. So you can never really rely on perfect precision when performing calculations with floats without the help of external libraries and functionality. And what really makes this a massive headache is when you have to compare floats to other floats. For example, if we were to remove this and just print whether the sum is equal to 0.3, what we're going to get as an output is false. Because just like I showed you earlier, when we printed the sum, what we got as an output was this crazy number over here. And unfortunately, computers do not consider these two floats to be the same. Or it's not really that unfortunate because the is equals to operator checks whether two objects are equal. So just to sum it up, we use floats to represent decimal numbers and fractions in programming. Now, in a future video, I will teach you how to properly perform calculations with floats, especially when it comes to calculations that rely heavily on precision. But for today's video, that's all I'm going to cover. 